there, Christian here. And as you can hear in the background, Buffalo Southern is currently operating and I just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. I hope everyone had a great 2023. It truly was a great year. It was great to get back into the channel. It was great to make videos when I felt like it, great to go on the road when I felt like it. And it was definitely the return I was hoping for and it went well, 2024. Didn't think we'd actually be here so quickly. It feels like yesterday that I was making decades jokes and then we had 2020. It is my annual look back at the videos I made over the past year. This year, it will be a return of my top five favorite videos, which I did do last year, and my top five honorable mentions as we look back on 2023. It really was a great year to be a real fan. It was a really relaxed year. East Broadtop returned. Unfortunately, I did not make my way down to narrow gauge country. I'm hoping that happens this year as I really do want to get down and see East Broadtop 16. But in my channel, I was able to see the 1309 various different times. Same thing with the Norfolk and Western 611 and Nickel Plate Road 765. Also was able to see the Black River and Western 60 on its last weekend of operation to date before the 1472 day inspection and got to see the return of the real Polar Express, the Pear Marquette 1225 itself. So anyhow, as annual tradition, let's look back on 2023 on my channel. All right, so my top five favorite videos from 2023. At number five, Reading and Northern 2102 Iron Horse Rambles 2023. In 2022, I was really looking forward to finally go see the return of the 2102. It never really was my favorite engine and honestly as the time kept getting nearer and nearer for it I just lost interest and with everything that was going on with my grandparents that year and everything else in my life I really cut back and didn't make time for the 2102 and I did kind of regret that. In 2023 I initially planned on chasing all three summer iron horse rambles. I decided to chase two of the days as I felt I would have sufficient enough footage for my video. One day I went for a little bit of hiking spots. That was the July excursion right before the 4th of July. And the other time I chased, I went for trying to get some of my favorite shots I had gotten with the 425 chasing along this route. The video I thought turned out great, but I will say the August chase was absolutely nuts because it wasn't that way in July, but again in August they ran on Sunday on Andy Muller's birthday but that would be my number five video. My number four would be the Pear Marquette 1225 North Bull Express 2023. While I did enjoy my chase with the 1225 this year, and I did definitely think the video was much better than the 2021 video. Granted, I don't think the 2021 video was that bad, but it did not make it to my top five favorites. I love the fact that I did, for the most part, get do overcast days, with the first day being more hazy light, but lighting work no matter where I shot the train at, minus maybe a shot or two. Minus the fact that there was an issue with the 1225 and it didn't run the 5 p.m. trip on Saturday, I got two solid days of chasing the 1225. The 1225 did not operate in 2022 due to the fact it was getting some serious wheel and running gear work thanks to FMW Solutions. This was my first time chasing the 1225 in two years and it really did sound better. Put on a fantastic show and it looked great, minus the fact the flying number boards were up. It was a great way to end the year, it was a great chase, and it was definitely one of my more favorite 1225 chases. My number three video this year would have to be the Chesapeake in Ohio 1309 Winter Flyer in the Mountains. This was my first adventure this year, and this was one that I was really excited to do because after seeing the shots from the Frostburg Polar Express last year, knowing how the lighting worked better in the winter time and the fact that they ran two times up the mountain in February on the Winter Flyer excursions, I was really excited to chase these excursions. Now, where we lucked out, even though it was originally announced that these excursions would be operating in the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad paint, the 1309 was still in her authentic Chesapeake and Ohio colors. Even though you could definitely see the Western Maryland paint bleeding through, this was so far my favorite 1309 chase. Hiking into quite a few different spots, trying to go for different angles, and going with one basic chase route, the lighting, while it was sunny, really did work for us, being low enough in the winter, where your shots aren't typically backlit like they are during the summer and the fall. And chasing with two great friends, Stephen Sane and Elaine Baggerly, it really was a great way to kick off my 2023. My number two would have to be Nickel Plate Road 765 Indiana Fall Color Steam Train. When I finally made my way out to the Indiana Northeastern Railroad in June for the Indiana Rail Experience, 
I walked away satisfied with my video, but when originally seeing that it would be operating trips out of Pleasant Lake to Hillsdale in return, steam leading both ways for the fall, I knew I wanted to return for the fall when originally seeing the schedule, and I'm glad I did. Wall fall colors weren't exactly there yet, and the weather really was all over the place. Rainy, sunny, overcast, cloudy. I really did enjoy my second chase with the 765 this year. The footage really came out well. Both times I saw 765 this year, the whistle sounded different. And yes, I know, the weekend after I was there, they were able to retune that classic 1980s tuning that everyone loves that Nathan Six Chime to produce. But chasing with, again, a few great friends, many great locations, trackside, it's even got me satisfied for the Indiana Northeastern. Where for me next year, I do plan on returning, but if other things happen, I wouldn't be too upset, minus the fact I'd be missing one of my favorite steam locomotives. And my number one favorite video for 2023, the Norfolk and Western 611 Shenandoah Valley Limited. My first chase with the Norfolk and Western 611 was on the Cavalier excursions from Lynchburg to Petersburg in 2017, and I am so glad knowing what did end up transpiring that I did actually make it down for said excursions. I then met back up with the 611 at Strasburg, and the first time she operated at Strasburg, you know, I was running on a short line railroad. It was cool, but it had just seemed like I missed the show I got in 2017. It returned to Strasburg in 2021 and stayed there for two years, and each time I saw the locomotive at Strasburg, I really thought it did a better job as to me, this is just personal opinion, it seemed like the crews kept getting more and more used to the engine. But in May of 2023, when it was announced the 611 was going on a farewell tour, there was an accidental leak and rumors and everything started flying in August. It was officially announced and originally I was like, probably not going to make it this year because I want to spend fall with 1309. But at the time, the 1309 was still out and no one really knew what was going on with that other than Western Maryland Scenic said it would be operational in the fall. After discussing this with a few of my friends and seeing that a few of us were really interested in seeing 611 on the main line, I decided to make the trek down to Stoughton, Virginia to chase the 611 on the Shenandoah Valley Limited. And let me tell you, it was great to see the 611 get back up to mainline track speed. Getting to see her run at 30 to 40 miles an hour again was something that I truly forgot how amazing was to see because it had almost been six years at this point with the way how things went after the 2017 season. So getting to see the engine operate like that and battling those mountainous grades, it was just as good as going to the Western Maryland, which thanks to the mechanical issues, we did end up going to the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad to chase the 1309 up to Frostburg and return. But it was, Probably my favorite adventure all year. It was my favorite video of the year. I cannot wait again to chase the 611 on this line. It probably won't be next year because I have this thing where I see the 611 every other year and then I see it twice a year. But we'll see what happens in 2024. I might honestly break that curse. And that was my top five favorite videos from 2023. And now we move on to my top five honorable mentions from 2023. Starting out at number five, Western Maryland 1309 Frostburg Polar Express. After watching all the videos from the Frostburg Polar Express trips last year and seeing how much easier it was to get into some of these hard locations to get to during the regular excursions, unless you want that to be your only shot, I took advantage of this trip this year. And while it was a fantastic time this year and probably my second favorite Western Maryland video I have shot so far, I had a great time with many different people and it was just an overall fun excursion to chase. My number four would have to be the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. This was my third time returning to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. First time was 2009, second time was 2016 on our channel's first big adventure. Third time was this year. I'm always amazed at the collection, seeing how they rearrange it. And while the World War I hangar was closed this time, I was able to reunite my grandfather and one of the planes he flew on when he served in the Air Force. My number three video would have to be the Steamtown National Historic Park video from August I made. Going down to Scranton the day before the 2102 excursions, I finally, after many years of planning, was able to go to Steamtown National Historic Park. The Baldwin Locomotive Works 26 was operating that day on the Scranton Yard Limited, as was the Nickel Plate Road 514. 
This was my first ever visit to Steamtown, and yes, while I know I miss the grand days of when they had the 2317 operating or 3254, it was just great for me to finally be able to see the collection, see those gems like my 6 Union Pacific Big Boy, the Nickel Plate Road 759, which now leads me with one other Nickel Plate Road Berkshire I need to see at the Age of Steam Roundhouse next year. It was just a great time, and I'm glad I was finally able to make it work and seeing 26 operate was pretty cool like everyone else i just await the day 3713 finally returns to steamtown my number two would have to be the black river and western 60 a rainy farewell special this was a great photo charter i attended dan drennan and the black river and western crews did a great job they were calling for monsoon weather which unfortunately we did get in the later half of the charter i've seen 60 work well but it really put on a fantastic show on that charter and i've never seen a charter crew adapt that well to changing weather conditions it was just a fantastic day again so many great people out there fantastic night shoot. I just had fun and it was a great way for me to finally see the 60 one last time before it went out for its 1472 day. And my number one honorable mention for 2023 is the Nickel Plate Road 765 Tri-State Steam Scenic 2023 excursion. Last year they ran three of these excursions. This year they only ran one of them. Running pretty much the entire length of the line where they run on the Indiana Northeastern from Eden, Ohio, going into Indiana and then going north at Steubenville and continuing north to Michigan where it then goes northeast to Hillsdale. This was a pretty epic excursion. Pretty easy to chase with the track speed. Even though it was an easy chase, the 765 still put on a great show. The lighting the first three shots and the last three shots was rough, but heck, this was a fantastic excursion. And this was my biggest regret of 2022, was never being able to go out there, especially when they had the 576 whistle on. This was just a fantastic excursion. My grandfather tagged along for that adventure because that was also the same adventure. I went to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, and I made my way to Lima to see the 779 again. But hands down, it was a fantastic time. I enjoyed myself. And I look forward to the next time I get to see, and I look forward to the next time I get to chase the 765 on the Tri-State Scenic because probably next year that will be the excursion I chase. Anyhow, it was a great 2023. Plan on keeping things pretty much the same. Maybe even do less this year. I may do more. But as of right now, the first major thing I'm waiting for, like everyone else, is the Canadian Pacific 2816 schedule to plan accordingly because I'm hoping to get a solid week chasing the 2816 across the states. Beyond that, I'm hoping to see the 113 this year as I know flow time is low. Definitely got to trek back to C765. Hoping I could squeeze 1225 into that list and I'm just waiting to see what else happens this year. Anyhow, I'm Christian. Hope you all have a great 2024 and stay tuned this week for part one of Best of Rail Fanning 2020.